Hello, welcome to Financial Management. My name is Matthew Winter. I'm very excited to be teaching you this semester. So let's get right into it. So a little bit about myself. My PhD is in finance from Ohio State. I've spent my professional career as an assistant professor at the University of Illinois at Chicago, teaching investment. And I've also been recently a visiting scholar to the Security and Exchange Commission working in the Office of Litigation Economics and in the Office of Corporate Finance. Email will be the best way to contact me, and my Zoom office hours are gonna be from Tuesday to 2, 2 to 3 p.m. and from 3 to 4 p.m. depending on your section or by appointment. The course webpage on Blackboard will have everything. So what will you find there? You'll find our course announcements, our lecture notes, problem sets, everything. Blackboard will be the place to go. Our course materials, you will have a required Harvard Business School, Business School case study. You will use real data to produce a professional memo, and you'll also have assignments that are typically bi-weekly. So you'll do these Excel problems in some cases with real data that are intended for you to practice and apply these concepts to the real world. And then we have a recommended course textbook. It's recommended in that it will be a good supplement for our lecture slides but it's not required. An older copy, something from the 15th, 14th, or even 12th or 11th edition will work just fine, with the one caveat that the chapters may not perfectly line up with the ones that I'm pointing to, but in terms of content, it will be perfectly fine. What's expected of you? I expect you to complete the readings, the recommended readings for each lecture prior to the beginning of the week. The recommended readings will be chapters from the book, and other assigned material throughout the semester. During the lectures that are all gonna be pre-recorded, I want you to pause, work out the examples, and then check the solutions. The intention is that you wrestle with these concepts, figure out how to do them, and then look to see the solutions. I don't want anyone to be left behind or to suffer from a math phobia. There will be suggested but not required things you'll see throughout the semester that I'll point to the financial press, and one that I would like to point out here is the indicator from Planet Money. It's a 10 minute daily podcast that talks about the economy and it's pretty easy to follow along. I expect you to do the readings. I expect you to do the assignment sets. I do not accept them late. You'll basically have two weeks from the time that they're posted. You have a week to actually listen to the lecture and complete it. And then you have a week to turn in the problem set. The case studies and memos, these can be worked on in groups. The same is true for the assignments, but make sure that you understand how to do everything that you put your name on. And clearly, I expect you to comply with the Stony Brook Honor Code. We're going to be using discounting cash flows, NPV, capital budgeting, and many of the concepts you probably saw in your Finance 101. We're also going to be using accounting, specifically for balance sheet and income statements. You're going to be making pro forma financial statements. That's just a fancy way of saying you're going to project how the firm will perform, how you expect the firm to perform next year. When we do all of this, we're going to be applying statistics, specifically mean, standard deviation, and covariance. Mean will be the way that we estimate expected cash flows. Um, and then obviously economics. So supply and demand, asymmetric information, competition, moral hazard, all of it will always be right at the forefront of what we're working on. What can you expect from me? You can expect me to provide you with a high return on your investment. I care, I'm very approachable, and I want you to not only do well in this class, but I want you to be able to take the information, concepts, and everything that you're learning and actually explain them on a job or a job interview or an internship. I want you to be able to apply these concepts to the real world so you can actually do well. Ask me plenty of questions via email during my Zoom office hours. This course, it's all about understanding the key concepts of corporate financing decisions. The weighted average cost of capital, basically how much does it cost for the firm to actually get its hands on some capital, capital budgeting, what do you invest in, and then so forth. <clears throat> Given that, Given those tools, you'll figure out your strategy. So how do I use the tools that I have to achieve my goal? We'll look at corporate valuations. We'll spend quite a bit of time on repurchases and dividends, 
capital structure decisions, and the list goes on. What is the role of financial managers? So it's important that we kind of orient and situate ourselves. There are many different corporate forms. And in this course, the one that we'll largely focus on will be the corporation. The key feature is that it's going to be a legal entity with the separation of ownership between the managers and the owners. So the shareholders who own the firm are different from the people that manage it. The, the firm itself will have to register with the state. It's a limited liability, meaning that corporate losses are going to be limited to what the investors put in the company and not their own personal wealth. So in that way, it's a bit different from some of our other corporate forms. And a really great feature is that it's going to be very easy to sell a share if it's a publicly listed firm. So we'll look at lots of publicly listed companies. When we orient ourselves, we have owners who own the firm. We then have investors. Investors can also be these shareholders, but it's not just going to be shareholders. You're also going to have debt. So it's going to be your debt holders, and those could be a bank that give you a loan. Those could be bondholders that are holding your bonds. And all of that is distinct from your stakeholders. Your stakeholders aren't only limited to the people that invest in the firm. Your stakeholders are going to include the owners, the customers, government, employees, suppliers, community, society, basically anyone or any group that can be affected by the firm or affect the firm has a stake in how the firm performs. Why does corporate finance matter? Because across all of these different stakeholders, we're gonna have a conflict of interest. We're gonna have different definitions of what well means for these different stakeholders. You can imagine that as a shareholder, you might want employees and managers to do something differently than they would wanna do, and so on and so forth. As a shareholder, you might have a different goal than a debt holder. The shareholders might want the firm to take on more risk, and the debt holders might want the firm to be safer to be able to pay off the debt. And the same is true for customers versus suppliers and et cetera. So we have lots of different conflicts of interest, and we have agency concerns. Agency concerns meaning that the people that manage the firm, our managers, are distinct from our owners. So we really don't always know what our managers are doing. We also have frictions. Capital is costly. Anyone who's ever taken out a loan or used a credit card knows that it costs money to get money. We have to make decisions with limited information. We often have to forecast. We deal with uncertainty. We think we have good measures of risk, but all of these are different frictions. We have asymmetric information. So managers might know more about the firm than shareholders. And we have taxes. We'll look at how taxes have real effects on the way in which the firm will finance itself. We also have financial distress, which is a fancy way of saying that when you get broke, you get worried about what you're gonna do. So I'm always worried about whether or not you'll pay me back. And once I worry about whether or not you'll pay me back, we can kind of slip into moral hazard, which is where I worry that if you're gonna pay me back, you might be doing some crazy stuff to be able to afford it. And then there's irreversibility. Plenty of our investments are irreversible. Think about building a sports stadium. It's really hard to undo. What should be, given all of this, what should be the financial manager's goal? In our, in our class, we're going to focus primarily on maximizing the stock price. This means that, yes, we want the stock price to go high, but we also want the firm to behave ethically. Why? Because our shareholders are also members of society, so they also have a responsibility to society at large. How do we think about firm value? Well, think about firm value as the summation of all of these future, ca future cash flows. We'll spend quite a bit of time talking about free cash flows. Free cash flows, just in a simple, intuitive sentence, once I get all the money in for my sales, less my operating costs, which is basically how much it, does, how much it costs me to make those sales, less the taxes that I pay, and less the required investments that I have to make to continue to operate, everything left over is money on the table. And that money's gonna go to shareholders and it's also gonna go to creditors and bondholders. Those future cash flows happen across different time periods. So that subscript FCF1 and 2 all the way to infinity, 
those are telling you different time periods. And you'll notice how with each time period, we're discounting that by the weighted average cost of capital. That denominator, that WAC, that can be affected by how the firm mixes its debt and equity, what are interest rates, if interest rates are high, all things held equal, investors might even want a higher WAC for us, how risky is the firm, if we're very risky, investors are gonna to wanna to have a large return, it's gonna be a higher cost of capital, all things held equal, and then obviously risk appetite. We've seen in the real world how there are periods when, as an investor, I'm very comfortable with risk, and there are periods as an investor when I'm less comfortable with risk. So that risk aversion and that risk appetite will also affect our cost of capital. A simple course outline, we're gonna start with capital budgeting, basically how do I invest, what investments make sense, then we'll move into dividend policy. So once you do all of these investments and get cash, how do you pay it out to your investors? We'll get into capital structure, and then we'll look at some applied topics. With capital budgeting, we'll start with a refresher of our intro to finance material. So we're gonna discount cash flows, amortization, which is paying off a loan, bit by bit, and also paying down the interest. And then we'll get into managers and market efficiency. So we'll look at the role of financial managers, and we'll look at ways of thinking about market efficiency. Once we have an efficient market, we'll use it to estimate the cost of capital. So we're gonna apply the CAPM. And then once we have a good way of thinking about that discount rate in the denominator, we'll then forecast cash flows. We'll do that numerator. So you'll build pro forma financial statements. And then lastly, once we <laughs> have done all of that, we'll have a stock price. And then our question will be, are there prices that we worry about? So we'll look at financial options. We'll look at calls and puts and different call and put investment strategies as ways of mitigating risk. And we'll talk quite a bit about real options. Real options, an easy way to think about it is that if I can wait or if I can expand or if I can abandon a project, then suddenly the money on the table might look a little bit different. We'll get into dividend policy, as I said, distributing cash to your shareholders. Why do dividends matter? You can imagine that. If we have complete information, a perfectly frictionless world, I really may not care how you pay me the cash as an investor, but once we have these frictions like information asymmetry, taxes, etc., then you, the manager, might be signaling some things to me with your dividend policy. So we'll look at that. In the second part of the course, we'll look at the mix of debt and equity. Why does this mix matter? Obviously, it's going to matter because we're going to have Frictions. We're going to have taxes, bankruptcy costs, agency, conflicts of interest, lots of fun things. And then in the very last part of the course, we'll be able to look at some applied topics. So once we go out, build out our understanding of options and also of weighted average cost of capital, we'll then look at how managers can use derivatives and other hybrid securities to achieve financial goals mergers and acquisitions, and we want to go buy a company, how is that going to affect our free cash flows? Does it make sense? What are we expecting? How do we finance it? And lastly, time permitting, we'll be able to get into the financial crisis, the recent crisis as a consequence of COVID, and public and private capital markets. The topics for this week, your next lecture is all going to be a review of the time value of money. We're going to go through MPV, annuities, perpetuities, amortization, Again, the intention is for you to pause the video as we go through it. It'll be a bit longer than our typical lectures. And then next week, after we've kind of built out our tools, we're gonna to get right into the role of financial managers and market efficiency. So your next lesson will be on the time value of money. We'll review the relevant materials that are gonna be applied all throughout the course. Everything that you need will be posted on Blackboard, and to prepare, you should read Chapter 1 and Chapter 4.